want to tell you a story about a friend of mine named Jeep. Jeep was a very good miner, very intelligent, very safety conscious. About 30 years ago, Jeep was working the 4th of July weekend to do an examination of a mine. Due to a failure at the mine, a fan going down and the signal not going off, Jeep drove his uh, rail vehicle into an area of the mine that had lost ventilation. When he drove in, he didn't notice that the air current was not traveling with him. The vehicle made a spark and there was an explosion. It took several days and numerous people to get to Jeep and recover him. When the re rescuers got to Jeep, he, he was dead. But it just goes to show you that one error and a series of events can create major problems at a coal mine. Pre-shift examinations are very important and doing them properly is the, is the key to preventing mine explosions. Hi, I'm Mike Burnage. Pre-shift and on-shift mine examinations are an important part of every underground mine safety program. Required by law, pre-shift examinations must be conducted no sooner than three hours before miners enter the workplace to ensure that it's safe for incoming miners. This training program will teach you how to perform a quality mine examination. First, you'll follow a miner as he conducts an examination in an underground mine. Afterwards, you'll practice conducting your own mine examination in a simulated virtual mine on a computer. Whether you're a new miner or a veteran miner, this training program will teach you how to conduct a proper and thorough mine examination. Thanks for watching. It's important to speak with your cross shift so you know of any changes that might have happened in the condition of the mine and any supplies you might need throughout your shift, whether it be normal things or something to take care of a violation or danger discovered. Right in the mine, I would look for some loose rock. If you would see any loose rock on the bottom, that could signify a change in the roof, which could be something as simple as draw rock. It could be more significant. There's a couple of ways to tell if your air movement is proper through the mine. You could hang a streamer, or you could just stop and feel the air movement across your body. On my pre shifted exam, if I find cables hung improperly, make sure I stop, rehang the cable. If I cannot rehang the cable myself, or if it needs repaired, I'd be sure to tell an electrician immediately so it can be repaired and taken care of. On the way into the mine, you'd pretty much do a visual check of the rock dust. If I find an area that's not rock dusted enough, I'd be sure to get rock dust and dust it. If I could not get it myself, I would make sure that somebody else knows to bring dust in to take care of the problem. Insufficient rock dusting could cause a small ignition to become a major explosion. Ventilation is the most important thing in a mine. You gotta make sure that all walls, back checks, line bradishes are all hung properly and built properly. Any damage done to a wall or a bradish needs to be corrected immediately because you're short circuiting air from one place to another. Fresh air bays, you gotta always make sure that there's nothing blocking them, no obstructions, no roof falls near them. Make sure that men can get to them safely. SCSR caches, you gotta make sure there's no obstructions, make sure there's branch lines coming off your lifeline to them. On the right end of the section, you make sure you check the lifeline the whole way in, make sure cones are in the proper direction, make sure branch lines are in the right spots. The gases I would normally check for on my pre-shift would be methane, CO, and low oxygen. Methane presents a fire and explosion hazard. The max methane allowed is 1%. If you were to find methane at 1%, you would need to shut down all equipment Reventilate the section to get your methane levels below 1%. Make sure you call it outside and put it in the book. Face gas tests have to be made one foot from the roof, face, and rib. It's very important to take your gas checks when you're supposed to. Methane gas is a very dangerous gas. It's odorless, colorless, and tasteless, and it's very explosive. Its explosive range is from 5 to 15%, and its ignition temperature is 1100 to 1380. Methane's a decay of organic material that's found in coal. Methane is not toxic, but it does reduce oxygen levels, which could cause suffocation. To 
do a proper roof examination, you would first do a visual check of the roof. You would look around for any changes, any rock that has fallen. Then you would do a sound and vibration test. To sound the roof, you would take a blunt object, such as a hammer, and you would smack it against the roof. Once you sound the roof, if it is poor, it will have a drummy sound. But every roof is different, so the sound might change a little. Then you would do a vibration test. You place one hand against the roof, and you use the other hand to smack the roof with your hammer or blunt object. You can feel the vibration travel from your hammer to your hand. You might have a loose piece of rock. Some signs that you do have some bad roof around. It could be flaking, chipping. It could be rib squeezing. It could be a number of things. Draw rock breaking up around the bolts. Anything could cause your roof bolts to loosen up. You could have a pressure cutter come through, a clay vein, or draw rock. Anything could open up after it was bolted, causing your roof bolts to become loose. You would correct that by, if you can get a bolt or two to the spot, you would put replace the bolt. If you couldn't get a bolt or two to the spot, you would either place a cap piece above the plate or set a post. The loose material that would be between the bolts, you would want to scale it down and make sure you move it off the runway so nobody would get injured. If I would see rock on the bottom during my examination, I would make sure I stop and do a visual exam of the area because that could mean that there is a change in the roof's condition. I would make sure that I would pry down any loose rock that still might be hanging and do a sound and vibration test. If it is a further problem that I could not take care of myself, I'd be sure to danger the area off and make sure that somebody could get there with materials to take care of the problem. It's very important that stop signs are up properly on both sides of your canvas, the tight side and the wide side. That way, no matter what side of the canvas a person may enter, they can see that the roof ahead of them is unsupported. The line curtains in the face area are important to keep the methane and other gases from building up at the face. If you see a line curtain down anywhere, be sure to rehang it. When checking my line curtains, you make sure they're tight to the roof and to the bottom and they're the proper distance from the rib and the proper distance from the face. When you check curtains, make sure they're tight to the rib, floor, and ribs. By federal and state regulations, the air required in the last open cross cuts nine thousandths. If while taking my air reading, I find that I don't have enough air, I'm gonna start checking all the curtains in the section and find where the air is short circuiting so I can get my air back. If you don't have enough air in your last open cross cut, you'd wanna make sure you check all your stoppings and back checks to find where the problem is and correct it so you can get your air back to your last open. To find your velocity of your air, you'd use an anemometer. The formula for calculating air quantity in a mine is area times velocity gives you your quantity. To do an anemometer reading, you would take your anemometer and you would do traverse reading. You would start in the middle or the end and you would take one minute to get across that entry. You would take the velocity and you would multiply that by your area of the cross cut you took the reading in. That gives your quantity. To find the area of an entry, you would simply multiply your height times your width. To take an air reading behind the curtain, it would be the same as taking it in an entry. You would find the area and you would do a traverse reading for one minute and multiply your velocity by your area to get your quantity. While doing a pre-shift on a load center, you want to check for multiple things. You want to check and see that there's rubber mats underneath of all the plugs. You want to check that the make sure the plugs aren't damaged in any way and make sure they're properly labeled. Make sure there's fire extinguishers and rock dust close by, and there's a resuscitation chart somewhere near the power center. Also at the load center, we have a first aid kit and a section escapeway map. After I'm finished with my pre-shift exam, I'd fill out my pre-shift book. In this pre-shift book, you have to fill out your date and your times, you did your examination, any violations or conditions found, and what you've done to correct them or report them, any air readings and your gas readings, and then you'd finish it up by signing your name. Date 624, 2011. Section examined to right. Time 12 to 1. Face is L3 to R3, no cross cuts, no violations, no dangers. Last open cross cut, L1 to L2, 11,450, 0 CH4, 20.902, air proper course, 
ample volume of visual electric equipment okay, safe to enter. The four lines of defense to prevent a mine explosion is good gas testing, ventilation, rock dusting, and proper examinations. I'd like to tell you about an event that took place at a coal mine that I worked at earlier in my mining career. We had a, an event at that coal mine, an incident, I guess you would call it, where we had a well-ventilated area. It was in a pillar mine where we were actually extracting 100% full pillar mining. And we had an area of the mine where we had the bottom bump. And what I mean by a bottom bump, we had major bottom breakage, and that allowed a massive methane accumulation to exit the bottom and to actually inundate the section. Now, inundate means it just flooded over top of our mining equipment. And to this day, I am so happy that we ran by a running right philosophy at that mine, whereby our people did things right. What do I mean by doing things right? Well, the area was well rock dusted. The permissibility on the equipment was well done, well maintained. The ventilation was well engineered in that mine and the ventilation checks being made by the on-shift and pre-shift examiners were done on schedule to ensure that we did have proper ventilation. When the methane first exited the bottom and inundated the section, the ventilation system initially did not handle it. Even though it was as designed, proper in every way, the methane did come out over top of our mining equipment. It took a while, not long, five minutes maybe, for the methane to then exit away from the mining equipment and go back up through the pillar dot area into the gob. And again, I'm just so happy that uh, the people did things right at that mine. Uh, the rock dusting, again, up to snuff 100%. The equipment, no accumulations, no float dust allowed to accumulate on anything. Because anything would have gone wrong, I would not be talking to you today about an incident. I'd be talking to you about an event, an explosion that could have killed, we had 10 people on that crew and who knows what damage could have been done had that methane ignited. I'm also a firm believer in that every worker in every one of our coal mines must do, absolutely must do, an adequate, a good adequate pre-op on whatever piece of mining equipment they're operating. Never take for granted that something on that piece of equipment could not cause an incident, could not cause an event, or, God forbid, could not cause a disaster. Thank <laughs> you.